I've had it all the way up to the hood of my car. I mean, it didn't chase us or anything like that. <laughs> the best time to sit is in a rainy, stormy night. You got people standing out in the middle of the road. A chemical electromagnetic thing, I don't know what. Well, it causes a considerable amount of problems. As you might well understand. I've not seen it myself. Scared the living heck out of me. It wasn't scary. <laughs> Something goes, goes on out there. And boys, it does exist. This is the spook light. For more than a century, tourists have flocked to this road along the Missouri-Oklahoma state line. Hello, I'm your host, Rance Berger. The phenomenon of this area has been studied by generations of scientists but no single theory has been proven. We're here to show you the history, the science, and the ghost stories behind the Hornet Spook Light. A spook light is an unexplained source of light, often appearing near remote areas. These lights vary in size, color, intensity, and duration. Sometimes one light can be split into pieces. Spook light sightings date back to 1866, here along the Warren Branch. This creek was once a vital lifeline to the Quapaw Indians, whose descendants still live in the area. Quapaw Indians were the first to document sightings of a mysterious light on tribal lands in the 19th century. Tales of the light passed through generations of spoken Quapaw lore. The Quapaws explained the phenomenon with a haunting story of forbidden love. According to the lore, two young lovers committed suicide together by leaping from a nearby cliff after a Quapaw chief denied them permission to marry. The spook light represented the couple's souls. Another legend tells of a miner whose cabin was raided while he worked the nearby zinc mines. He carries a lantern as he searches the woods, looking for his slain wife and children. The ghost stories continued as the area began developing through the 1900s. In 1946, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers studied the spook light. The Corps set out to prove that the spook light was caused by car headlights from a nearby road. The engineers used every method they could think of, but failed to prove any causes. In the Corps' official report, the only conclusion is that there was no conclusion. Around this time, a man named Arthur Meadows became the first to capitalize on the spook light's tourism potential. Spooksville, USA sat at the intersection of State Line Road and East 50. The museum had plenty of literature, photographs, and souvenirs for curious visitors. A large viewing platform sat next to the museum. In the late 1950s, Meadows gave control of the museum to his brother-in-law, Garland Middleton. Middleton quickly adopted the nickname Spooky and expanded the museum. By the 1970s, the museum included a pool table, a jukebox, pinball machines, and a wide variety of snacks. Spooky had a tent or metal shed in there with an old uh, horse trough. They put soda pop and ice in and had a skillet and a bonfire and he cooked hamburgers on. They were good, but they were greasy. But they were good. <laughs> yeah, oh, he had a pool table in there and he sold uh, drinks in there. Uh, I don't know, he sold uh, soft drinks and coffee and had little things to candy bars to eat and things like that. But he had plaster to do inside with, with uh, articles on it. On the spook light. The house behind me sits on the original foundation of the Spook Light Museum run by Garland Spooky Middleton. And even though Spooky's museum is no longer here, the owner says he still gets visitors from all over the United States knocking on his door and asking about the spook light. The museum owners were not the only business people who used the spook light to attract customers. And the reason I named my taxes that is because <laughs> then people can find it. Because there's a lot of people who know about spook light, and I just say, well, I'm one mile north, so <laughs> All right. it's easy to find, and, and it makes it... And taxes are spooky. <laughs> <laughs> the next major study came in 1965. Sparked by the general curiosity of their era, researchers from Popular Mechanics set out to investigate what had become a major source of entertainment for local youth. The Popular Mechanics researchers ran a number of tests in the area. They attempted to synthesize the spook light by reflecting light from car headlights several miles away. They decided that's what it was, or else the farmers and people have been drinking too much of the stuff they made in the back barn. Right <laughs> the theory that the light's coming from commerce to Quapaw on the old 66 Highway did not hold up. They also investigated theories on the light being a product of swamp gas. Swamp gas occurs when luminous methane gas is released into the air and becomes visible in the dark. 
As technology improved through the 80s and 90s, spook light investigations became more advanced. Several organizations associated with paranormal investigations explored the area, as did journalists from various media outlets. Well, it's certainly getting more sophisticated. Uh, when in, let's see, in 2002, when the Gross Research Society was here, they brought ion meters and laser detectors and things like that. Of course, if they, when the first time they were here, they didn't even have. Despite thousands of hours of combined research, scientific evidence explaining the spook light's cause remains inconclusive. Joplin, Missouri's public library houses an extensive spook light file. Librarian Patty Crane says a wide variety of people come to the library to learn about the mysterious light. The question that we get a lot is where? First of all, where is it at? And then they want to know the legends associated with it, what people think, who's researched it, things like that. Of course, anything that's unusual is going to attract people and always the controversy about whether it's a natural phenomenon or supernatural, and of course supernatural really um, in interests people. And we get some people who are very skeptical and other people who believe it even though they've How never seen it. How important do you think this information is just to the history of the area? Oh, very important to the history of the area. This spook light is known in now all over the all over the country. In fact, probably worldwide in, you know, in some areas. So um, for this area, I think it's very important, yes. We headed to the Ottawa County Sheriff's Office and learned that spook light roads heavy traffic sometimes leads to bigger problems. Well, it causes a considerable amount of problems, as, as you might well understand. Uh, we get calls from people who live on the road consistently all the time uh, about cars being parked there, uh, the road being blocked. It's caused a lot of trouble. People come in and they've, they've uh, shot out yard lights and they've turned out lights in the front of people's porches. And, you know, anytime you've got 20 to 30, 40 people uh, on a road at night, whether they be in parked cars or they be pedestrians, uh, there's an element of danger. When I got ready to leave, we couldn't get through the road because they had laid rocks all the way across the road just to be just to be blocking the road. I've seen as high as uh, 50 cars out there on that road at one time. And then we have the other ones that come and start fires and throw trash, and you name it, the bad part of spook lighters. Uh, before the road was paved, People would build bonfires in the middle of the road. Farmers couldn't get up and down it, you know. Well, the main legal concern is just the fact that you've got cars blocking the major thoroughfare there. Alcohol is a major problem there, and we do make several arrests out there. We have numerous intoxicated people, uh, which occasionally that happens, or we've got road obstruction, uh, then we take action on that. If somebody's going to get killed or somebody's going to get hurt. So if, if if you're there when we show up, then you go to the Crossbar Hotel. Whenever I first became sheriff, I adopted a policy. If you go out there and they're drinking, you take them to jail, period. No questions asked. You know, call your lawyer. There's been a few shootings and stabbings out there at times. To my knowledge, we've had two, two fatalities that I can recall uh, during the time that I've been sheriff. The spook light is named for the village of Hornet, Missouri. But when spook lighters cross this road, they've actually entered Ottawa County, Oklahoma. This geography can sometimes cause mix-ups amongst tourists. I think probably one of the biggest problems that we have is people from Missouri who will come over and they'll think that they're still in Missouri and they'll wonder what we're doing over there. You know, what gives us the authority to tell them to turn their lights on? And then an attitude develops and then we have to explain to them that you're no longer in the state of Missouri, you're in the state of Oklahoma, you just left it back there about 100 feet. The easiest way to get to Spook Light Road is to exit Interstate 44 onto Highway 43 South. From Highway 43, head west on Iris Road where 43 intersects with County Road BB. Iris Road terminates when it intersects with State Line Road. Head north on State Line Road until you reach East 50, the modern-day Spooklight Road. Long before the tourist traps of the 1970s, Spooklight enthusiasts came here to East West 40, a red dirt road located one mile north of the modern-day Spooklight Road. The most popular viewing area is one to two miles west on Spooklight Road. 
Here are some tips to make your spook lighting experience safe and enjoyable. Park as far to the side of the road as you can, and if you decide to get out of the car, leave your parking lights on so that other vehicles can avoid yours. When traveling the road at night, drive carefully to avoid parked vehicles and spook lighting pedestrians. Area residents and your fellow spook lighters will appreciate it if you avoid making lots of noise and pick up after yourself before you leave. And always remember to have a designated driver. Uh, if they've got their parking lights on, they're not out acting stupid, uh, we generally don't say anything to them. Well, uh, my brother and my sister and some other assorted relatives and I drove down there, a bunch of us, and in our car, as soon as we turned onto the road, we could see the little single light up in the road ahead, very small. Kind of changed colors a little bit. Um, we drove towards it, and as we got in a dip in the road, we could see it at the beginning of the dip, but when we came out of the dip, it wasn't there. And we looked behind us, and there it was. I have seen what they say is the light. Uh, for me to tell you that the light is there, and that it is real, uh, I can't go that far. Well, back in them days, you used to come and visit. The kids right. made pallets out on the lawn. And, well, we made pallets out there, and I seen it. Scared the living heck out of me, but... One time it might be just a white light. Uh, the next time it might be two or three different lights, broke up into different colors. But we saw it that night, and it would park. It was off, it looked like about a mile off, and it would park and float up all the trees and sometimes it part and come back together again. It looked like a bunch of tumbleweeds on fire. So we sit out in the yard in the, in the summer and they'll just come up right out of the ground, right by our chairs. So we learned nothing unusual not to catch them in the evening just floating around there. As a teenager he'd come out here and park with the girls and sometimes a group of boys just come and park. And at that time we were seeing it here on 40th Road and about where my driveway is was as far east as we'd go. We'd try going any far, more east, it wouldn't show up. You can't drive underneath that because it goes over behind you and you're not there when you turn around and look. <clears throat> and it never showed up when we made noises. <clears throat> we had to sit there and be quiet, turn the lights out and all that. And sometimes it'd show up, sometimes it didn't. I've been out there times and you don't see a thing. We've checked two or three different roads and never could Humidity seemed to do had a lot to do with it. The warm, moist air is when it would show up. I have never seen the light and thought, you know, that this this is a great uh, mystery or this is a, a phenomenon that that you know I, I've never really and I guess maybe it's because I live here and was born and raised here. I just never seen what the big deal was because it just looked like a it just looked like a damn electric light. I grew up here, was born and raised in Joplin, and so, you know, it's, it doesn't have the kind of mystical allure it has for people who have never seen it or been around it, but it's, it's an interesting phenomenon. But when it started getting close to you, you could feel your hair on your arms <laughs> stand up. I mean, the static electricity and it was just, it was weird. <laughs> I definitely think that it's something unexplained. Uh, it's definitely there, and uh, what it is, I don't know if anybody will ever, will ever be able to tell what it is for sure. And boys, it does exist. I've seen it from the kitchen window up there at the other house several times, and I was so. See any freaks on Friday the thirteenth? Oh, I'm sure we will, man. Any any Friday that on Spook Light Road, there's bound to be a few freaks. And uh, we we're just checking the walking around. Really didn't think we were gonna see anything. And uh, we we're gonna about to get back in the car and I thought maybe it was just lights or something. I looked and saw it off on the woods and so we all got pretty excited and headed towards it and we never did get to it. So, But I definitely, we definitely know that's what it was. Yeah, about 20 some years ago I used to pull down here up there on the side of the road and we used to watch it, you know. Of course this is uh, 
a hangout for all uh, uh, excuse for the guys to make out with the girls. So everybody come down here parking, and it, then it would come out, and the girls would get really scared, you know, because uh, you drive down there and not see any roads or anything, and, and the thing would start getting brighter and dimmer, and then dancing around. And uh, it was kind of hard for me to find the road, but then uh, they paved it and everything. But then uh, got down here and got oriented and uh, came right to it. So. <laughs> Sure enough, there it is tonight. Nope, you're not. Alright, this is Friday the 13th. It's a full moon out. It's a full moon. It's a spook light coming toward us. This is the spook light. We were in infrared mode, so you did not see anything other than the light. The light to the upper right is a cell phone tower. But this below is the spook light. You can see it's in three or four different lights, closely together, in dimmed color. It's dim now and it'll brighten back up. Oh, this is the spook light. Starting to look like everything's just falling.